Hi everybody, it's Michael and I'm back with one of my walkthrough videos and today I want to show you Urbanization. Urbanization is from Queen Games. It's designed by Johnny Epson. I think it's his first game. I might be mistaken though. Um, the box says that it's uh, for 2 to 4 players, ages 12 and up, and it plays in 75 plus minutes. Um, what I have right here is the International Edition from Queen Games. I think this is actually the Kickstarter Edition, uh, but I got this in a trade, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, International Edition means that all the game material is in English, and there are uh, rules in English, French, Dutch, Spanish and German. Uh, so, uh, while it's a little bit arguable, probably, to call this International Edition if everything is in English, it's fine for the purpose of this video, because then you can read all the texts. Uh, what's this about? Well, um, it's an economic game, I would say. The game starts in the industrial age, and players develop these rural areas into cities, and they build factories, and basically at the end of the game you've arrived in modern times. There's an expansion that comes right with the game. Uh, Queen Games does this very often. Okay, so what I would actually like to do now is show you a full three-player game of urbanization with the inventions expansion. Have fun! So before we start, let's take a brief look at the components, as always. In the middle, we have the game board, of course, where we have the different areas, and six of them are covered because you play a three-player game in a four-player game these wouldn't be covered. Each of these areas has one of these little prize tokens. Then over here we have a turn track. The game will go over six rounds. And here we have a track to track the different action phases because each round consists of four phases. We have a scoring track where each player interestingly starts at the one and we'll see in a minute why that's the case. Then over here we have certain areas where players can get grain and basically each of these areas contains three grain markers because it's a three-player game and this return area up here contains twice the amount. Then we have areas for the different work orders, orange, grey and white. Up here we have the factories, they are stacked in order and then the first three are put out here. Up here we have the invention cards from the built-in expansion and basically these are placed according to the colors here, so this is not randomly, but looks the same each game. Over here we have a supply of money, skyscrapers, houses, factories and administrative buildings. We have 10 roll cards in the game. And then finally each player has one of these tracking sheets and let's just take a brief look at the green player. You have different tracks for citizens, houses, grain and work orders. You have action markers. Down here there is a track for taxes, and finally each player starts with 8 bucks. And what's important with these tracks is that the citizens are always calculated by the lowest number you have here. So basically right now we have one house, one grain marker so we can feed our people, and one work order, so basically jobs. But for example, if later on we would have three houses, we would still only have one citizens because we can't feed them and we can't supply jobs for them. Then you might ask, okay, why are we already at one on the house track? That is because we are not really done yet. With the setup, each player will have to place one of the houses. And we'll actually do that now. So, starting with our start player, the red player, we take an action marker and a house. And we can select any of the areas on the board, but there are areas with two building grounds and areas with only one building ground. So we select one with two. So we place our action marker in here to show that it's ours. We place our house in one of the building grounds and this prize mark is moved somewhere else. The green player decides to also grab a spot with two buildings in it. So he takes this one and he puts the mark here. And finally the blue player takes the one down here and he puts the marker over here. And since we can see on our tracking sheet that building houses gives one point, that explains why each player starts at the one already. And now that the setup is done, we can actually start the game. As I already said, the game will go over six rounds, and the first thing we do in each round is hire a character. So the red player can choose from any of these nine characters, because the tense ones on the mayor is special, and we'll see that starting from the second round. And the red player decides to take the 
Professor, which is basically a card from the expansion because it has to do with the inventions. The green player is next and he decides to take the architect and then the blue player takes the mill worker. Next up is the main part of the game, the perform action phase and this perform action phase goes over four phases actually and in each phase each player will have one action, one after the other, starting with the red player of course. And if we take a close look at what we can do, there are nine different actions and since we took the professor we want to do the inventions action. So we move up here to the invention track and we can use one of our action markers to move along the track. And the first step is always free each round, but then each additional step costs one money. So we just perform one step, which is free, and then we could normally choose any of these two inventions, but since we have the professor, we can take both of them, and we have to discard the professor. So, we now have two inventions. Each invention will give us one victory point, so we immediately move up to the three, and then we just place these inventions in our player area. The green player decides to buy land, and so from the area that he's in, he can move to any area that he shares an edge with. And since there are still two areas with two building grounds that are not so expensive back here, he decides to first move into this area. This one is now his. There is one price marker in there. That means he has to pay one dollar to the bank for acquiring this one. And then this marker can go anywhere else and so decides to put it here to be nice to the red player. The blue player also decides to take the inventions action. He moves one space for free, pays a dollar to move the other space, and then he can select the iron plow card. And he receives a victory point. And then we're into the second round of actions. The red player buys land, so he moves into here, he pays a buck, and that one goes down here. The green player picks the raise buildings action, and so he can select one type of building and he selects houses and can build as many of them as he likes and he decides to build a house here and here and normally each house would cost two dollars but since he is the architect he can pay one less for each building that he builds in one action phase so the architect is discarded and he only pays a total of two for the two houses and each house will also give him one victory point so he moves up to three. And for each house that you build, you get to advance one space on the house track. The blue player wants to trade grain. And when you trade grain, you can choose whether you want to sell or to buy. And he wants to buy. And first of all, he has his mill worker, which allows him to receive two grain markers for free from the field. So he gets those two. And then he wants to buy two more. And when you buy, you always buy from right to left, because then the prices get more expensive. And you can only buy one marker from each barn, so one from here and one from here for a total of two. And after paying the two dollars, he gets to put all four of his newly acquired grain markers onto the grain track. And we move into the third action round. The red player decides to build two houses, so that costs him a total of four. Advances his track to the three and also gives him two victory points. The green player buys two grain for two. The blue player buys land for one, and he puts the marker here, and then we advance into the fourth round. The red player decides to receive work orders, so he takes one of his action markers and puts it on any of these work order spaces on any factory, and he decides to select the butcher. And since there are two orange cubes in the space, he receives two orange work orders that he can put here meaning basically that this factory provides work for up to two of his citizens. The green player also decides to do this, and since this is the last of the work order spaces, he not only receives two cubes, but also one dollar from the bank. And finally the blue player decides to sow seeds, and normally you could take one grain marker and put it on any empty building ground, but since he has the iron plow, he is allowed to sow up to two seeds per building ground. And so he takes a third seed marker and puts it on here as well. Now that the action round is done, we can 
uh, move into the next phase, which is prepare the next round. And the first thing uh, that happens is harvest. So um, the red player didn't sow any grain, but he has the seed drill, which says that he gains one grain marker during the harvest phase. Then the green player didn't sow and nothing happens. And then finally the blue player did sow, so he gets back all these three markers. And in addition, the same amount from the supply. And with, with these six markers, he can actually fill his grain track up to the eight space. Then next is factories, meaning that the factory with the lowest number, the bakery, is removed from the game and replaced with the next card from the top of the stack. And if there had been any markers on the one that was removed, they would have been given back to their respective players. Next up is citizens, where each player adjusts their citizen marker. And the red player does have three houses and three jobs, but only two grain, so he has two citizens. And then you immediately score two victory points per citizen, as you can see here, here for example. So the red player gets four points. The green player has three of everything, so he gets six points. And the blue player remains at one citizen, so he only gets two points. Next up is feeding, where you have to remove one grain for each of your citizens. So the red player loses everything, the green player loses everything, and the blue player only has to give up one. And all those markers are returned to the return area. Who would have guessed? And now each player receives one victory point for every for every three grain markers still on their board. So the blue player is the only one to leave any points and he gets two. Then we have the grain refill, meaning that in the return area there might only be six grain and the rest is returned to the fields first until they are full and that's about it. And finally we can advance the game turn marker, meaning that we go into the second round. And now at the start of the second round, before we hire the characters, the mayor has to be assigned to the player with the lowest victory points and that is the blue player meaning that he'll immediately get one victory point and be the start player for this round. The blue player selects the architect, the red player takes the mill worker and the green player takes the industry boss. The blue player uh, decides to buy land and he wants to move into here, so he has to pay two dollars and he can distribute those two in any way he likes and he puts one over here, the other one over here. The red player also wants to buy land, he moves into here, he also has to pay two dollars and he puts one marker in here and the other in here. The green player would have liked to purchase this land but with three it's too expensive for him right now so he decides to move over here instead just paying one and he puts this marker down here. As a second action the blue player takes the inventions action, he moves his one free space and then takes the porcelain invention. Now the red player would like to attract industry and for that you need an industry that has all his work order spaces filled, in this case the butcher, and then you can place one of your action markers on here and actually take the factory and put it into your player area and the markers are returned to the respective players. Now we have the factory but of course we have to build it somewhere and for that we take one of the factory markers and put it onto one of our empty building grounds. And building a factory gives you two points. And the empty spot is replaced with the factory from top of the stack. The green player takes the inventions action, moves his first free space, then pays a buck to move another space, and takes the steam engine. And he gets a point. The blue player needs money and he has some grain to sell, so he decides to take the trade grain action, but this time selling. And since these barns are at full capacity and also the field is at full capacity, the maximum of what you can do is sell two grain into here and two grain into here. And that's exactly what he does. And this will give him four dollars altogether. The red player also decides to buy grain. He receives two for free from the field for the mill work from the mill worker. And then he buys another one for a total of one. The green player also decides to buy grain. He buys two. For two. The blue player decides to build three buildings and thanks to the architect that only costs him three dollars and he gets three victory points and gets to advance to the four space. The red player receives work orders from the reefing mill so he gets one grey cube 
the green player can use the industry boss to attract one industry that doesn't have all their work order spaces filled decides to take the sawmill because in conjunction with the steam engine this will now give him one victory point at the end of the game so then he can place a factory in here and receive two points since nobody did plant any grain the only thing that happens is that the red player gets one grain marker thanks to his seed drill then in the factory's phase the green player may exchange up to two orange for gray cubes um, thanks to the steam engine and he does this so he can now let her use them in his sawmill also in the factory phase the blue player receives one orange work order thanks to the porcelain then the windmill is removed and replaced with a textile factory then citizens since the red player has only three houses but in enough grain and jobs his citizens advance to three and he'll get six points the green player doesn't have enough grain so he moves down to two citizens and he gets four points and the blue player also moves to two citizens because he has only two work orders and he also gets four points then feeding the red player pays three cubes the green player pays two and the blue player pays two and nobody gets any points for leftover grain after redistributing all the grain uh, the capacity everywhere is full and we still got one marker left over then this one is put into the return area then we move into the third round and the blue player still keeps the mayor card and gets a point the blue player selects the mill worker the red player selects the foreman and the green player selects the professor the blue player buys land for two and he moves the markers here and here the red player decides to receive work orders from the pottery so normally that would be two but because he has the foreman he can get double the amount that is four orange cubes the green player receives work orders from the weaving mill that is he gets one gray cube and because it's the last space that he just filled he also gets one dollar the blue player as a second action wants to buy grain first he uses his mill worker for two free grain and then he buys one from the first barn for one dollar the red player decides to attract the weaving mill as an industry so let's put here those markers are returned um, he can still put a factory in here he receives two points for the factory and finally since the spinning jenny will give him one victory point when he has the weaving mill he also he's also set up for this end game bonus now and we put out the coal mine from the stack the green player wants to make some inventions so he moves his free space moves the moves another space for one dollar his last one and then he can use his professor card to gain both the traction engine and the kerosene lamp and he receives two victory points for those two inventions the blue player decides to sow seeds and he has four grain available and also two building grounds and if you remember thanks to his iron plow he may sow up to two seeds Per building ground so you can actually place all four the red player wants to produce goods so he has two factory factories and with one action you can produce in as many factories as you like so the weaving mill will produce gray cubes for gray work orders and he has one work order that we can put on here and the butcher will also take one However, the spinning jenny says that all of his orange factories produce at least two goods. That's a typo right here, it should be goods. When he chooses the produce goods action, so he can actually use two of his orange work cubes on here. Okay, so what does it mean? First, each produce good will give one victory point, so he gets three. And then each good has a value, orange is at one and gray is at two meaning that he'll earn a total of four dollars 
for this production action. The green player would also like to produce goods. He has a sawmill, which takes one gray cube, but he has the kerosene lamp, which basically does the same thing as the spinning jenny, so he can use two of his goods for two victory points and four dollars. And those markers stay on the factory until the end of the round, so basically each factory can only produce once per round. For his last action, the blue player decides to receive some work orders from the coal mine. The red player wants to buy grain and he buys these three cubes for a total of four. The green player also wants to buy grain, he buys these three, but thanks to his traction engine he only has to pay one per cube no matter what the normal price would be. So actually all well, three cubes cost him only three. Then the round is over and we move into the perform next round phase. We start with the harvest. The red player receives one grain thanks to his seed drill. And the blue player may actually harvest those four yellow cubes and get the same amount from the supply. Next up are the factories. First the blue player receives one orange cube thanks to his porcelain invention. The green player may exchange up to two but he only has one orange work orders for grey work orders thanks to the steam engine. Then the lowest number factory, and this is the pottery, is removed from the game. Red gets back his action marker and is replaced with the bank. And then the markers are removed from the factories and return to the supply. Next up are the citizens. The red player will stay at three because he has only three houses, so he gets six points. The green player will stay at two because he doesn't have enough jobs, so he scores four points. And the blue player can move up to four, so he'll score eight points. Feeding. The red player has to give up three cubes. The green player has to pay two cubes. And the blue player has to remove four cubes. And then he also gets one point for his remaining grain. And after the grain refill, the market looks like this. And then we can go into the fourth round. And now the green player will be the starting player, so he receives the mayor card and one point. The green player takes the foreman, the blue player takes the architect, and the red player takes the tax collector. The green player takes the inventions action, he moves two spaces for one dollar, and then he takes the decimal converter for one point. The blue player decides to pick the final action that I haven't shown you yet, which is collect taxes. And basically you move this marker one space to the left and then you get as many dollars as your citizens, in this case four. However, you can only do this if this marker is further to the right than your citizen marker. So basically, once it would be like this, uh, the blue player wouldn't be able to collect taxes anymore. But for now he's fine. The red player would also like to collect taxes, but he has the tax collector, so actually may do this twice in a row. So this marker goes down here, and he collects 2 times 3, 6 dollars. The green player collects work orders from this coal mine, and with the help of the foreman he can actually collect 4 orange cubes. The blue player wants to build, and he wants to build skyscrapers. Normally those cost 3 apiece, but with the architect they only cost 2 apiece, so he can actually afford 2 for a total of four dollars. Now when you build a skyscraper you actually remove houses and you put on skyscrapers and each skyscraper will score you two points for a total of four and each skyscraper will let you advance your house marker by one. The red player takes the inventions action he moves up to four spaces by paying three dollars and he takes the sewing machine and also gets a victory point. The green player produces goods. He can produce two grey goods thanks to his kerosene lamp. So he receives two victory points and four bucks. The blue player sows grain and as before he can put all four of his cubes into the building grounds. The red player takes yet another inventions action, he moves over here for one dollar and picks up the dynamite which gives him one victory point. As his last action this round, the green player 
buys three grain for a total of three thanks to his tracture engine. The blue player decides to collect taxes again for another four dollars. And the red player decides to take yet another invention, the genetically modified food. So it's the end of the round and the harvest phase. The red player receives three grain, one for the seed drill and two for the genetically modified food. The green player receives nothing and the blue player gets his usual four and four grain. During the factory's phase, the green player receives one grey work order and he may exchange two oranges for grey. So those are removed and he gets three grey. And the blue player gets one orange cube for the post lane. Then those cubes are removed. The textile factory is removed from the game and replaced with the oil refinery. Then the citizens. The red player stays at three, so he gets six points. The green player can move up to three, so he also gets six points. And the blue player can move up to six, so he receives 12 points. Feeding the red player removes three, so does the green player. And the blue player has to remove six. And nobody scores points for any leftover grain. And then we can move into the fifth round. The green player is last, so he keeps the mayor card and he gets a point. The green player picks the real estate broker. The blue player picks the industry boss. And the red player takes the architect. The green player uses the real estate broker to exchange the price marks in any two territories. And he chooses those two. And then he can immediately buy one. And of course he takes this one for one dollar. The blue player uses his industry boss card to attract the coal mine, despite the fact that it doesn't have all three work orders yet. Uh, those are returned and he gets to put a factory down here, which will give him two victory points. The red player receives two work orders from the oil refinery. The green player collects taxes, so he receives three dollars. The blue player buys this piece of land for two, and he puts the markers here and here. The red player produces goods. He produces one gray good in the weaving mill, which gives him one victory point and two dollars. And then he can produce two orange cubes, thanks to the spinning jenny in the butcher. And that gives him two dollars a piece, thanks to the sewing machine, and also two victory points a piece, thanks to the dynamite. So overall, he receives six dollars and five victory points. The green player buys two grain for two. The blue player can only buy one grain because he has only two dollars left, so he just buys one for one. The red player decides to buy or build two skyscrapers and with the architect that will only cost him four bucks. So these two houses these two houses get replaced. The red player receives four points. And he has to pay, pay four dollars. And of course his house track is advanced to five. Actually he builds a third skyscraper for another two bucks, another two victory points, and another advancement on the house track. The green player takes the inventions action. He pays one dollar to move over here and picks up the combustion engine for one victory point. The blue player sows grain. And finally, the red player buys two grain for a total of three. In the harvest phase, the red player receives three grain again. And the blue player harvests a total of six grain. In the factory's phase, those markers are removed. The green player can exchange these two for grey ones. And he also receives six good for his decimal converter. And the blue player receives an orange good for porcelain. And the bank is removed and replaced with the electric plant. Next up are the citizens. The red player advances to the four, receiving eight victory points. The green player stays at the three for six victory points. And the blue player stays at the six for 12 victory points. Then feeding. 
red player has to get rid of four grain. The green player out of all his grain. And the blue player must also pay all his remaining grain. And we move into the final round of the game. And green will again be our starting player. The green player takes the industry boss. The blue player takes the mill worker. And the red player takes the foreman. The green player moves forward to the last space and takes a microchip invention, giving him another victory point. The blue player produces two orange goods in his coal mine, so he gets two victory points and two money. The red player produces two orange goods in his butcher and one grey good in his weaving mill, again receiving five victory points and six dollars. The green player uses his industry boss to attract the electric plant and he puts factory back here and receives two victory points. The blue player buys grain. First he uses his mill worker to get two grain for free and then he simply buys two for two. The red player receives work orders from the oil factory and since it's the last space he receives a dollar and because he uses foreman he actually gets four grey cubes. The green player then attracts the factory so the last factory piece in the game can be built here for another two victory points. The blue player sows his grain. The red player builds three administrative buildings. Those don't take up a building spot, they just go into areas that you control. Each of them costs three, so he pays nine dollars. And each of them is worth two victory points, so he gets six. The green player for his last action is a bit in a tight spot because he has no grain left, he doesn't have any money. So basically the best thing he can do is produce all goods uh, that he still has work orders for. So he decides to put two into the sawmill, two into the electric plant and two into the oil refinery. And thanks to the microchip, each of those grey goods will give him two points for a total of 12. And each will give him three money for a total of 18. There's not much left what the blue player can do, so he decides to pay his final dollar to pick up the telephone card to at least get one final victory point during the game. And finally, the red player also picks up one final invention and also receives a point. Then, in the harvest phase, the red player receives as usual three grain from his inventions, the green player receives nothing, and the blue player gets eight grain from his fields again. Then the green player receives one grey good, and the blue player receives an orange good for the porcelain, and a white good for his new telephone. The red player stays at four citizens, so he gets eight points. The green player is reduced to zero citizens, so he doesn't get any points at all. And the blue player has six citizens for 12 points. Now we still have to feed. The green player doesn't have anything to give, but he also doesn't need to because he is basically at zero citizens. And the blue player again pays six, but he doesn't have enough, enough left to score any points. So before we go into the final scoring, the green player is at 62 points, the blue player is at 68, and the red player is at 76. Then first of all we have factory bonus, so we take a look at which player has the highest amount of factories, their values, and that is without any doubt the green player. So he receives another two points. And then the only other thing we take a look at is the points from the inventions paired with factories. So the red player has the spinning jenny, which needs the weaving mill, which he has, so he receives one additional point. The blue player doesn't have any matchings because he would need the pottery or the law firm. And finally the green player has the steam engine and the sawmill which is one point. Then he has the kerosene lamp and the oil, ref oil refinery which is another two. And finally he has the microchip and the electric plant which is another five. So red wins with green in second place and blue in last place and unfortunately the 18 bucks that green just made in the last round 
were for nothing. There are two final things I'd like to mention because they didn't come up. One is the additional two characters that we didn't use. One is a farmer uh, which provides with two fields to sow grain on if all your building spaces are full. And the union leader lets you produce any color of good in any factory. So basically, for example, if the red player would have liked to produce another orange cube, but he had already produced in the budget, he could use a cube to put it in the weaving mill with the union boss, and then it's treated as an orange cube. So basically, all of his bonuses would have triggered as well. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that you can also build over your own factories. So basically, the red player didn't have any more spaces for factories, but for example, let's say he just wanted to build the hospital then he could replace any of his factories, which has a lower number, which would be both, uh, with the hospital, making the other one inactive. The hospital would now be the active one, but in the endgame scoring, the one underneath would still be taken into account for the highest factory value and also for the combination with the inventions. So, I hope you enjoyed this overview of urbanization. Hopefully I've shown you now how to play the game that it's not a complicated game after all, maybe the rules are a little bit tough to understand, but I think you should be covered in that regard now, after seeing this video. I've hopefully also shown you that this is a very tight game, you only get 24 actions on the whole game, money is tight, so you have to really try and make these actions, actions count, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, and hopefully you now know whether this is a game that uh, is of interest to you in a game that you maybe want to add to your collection. So, uh, I guess that's it. I'll see you next time. Have fun playing and bye bye.